bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Welcome one more time to the Word Channel 345. We do thank the Lord for you. We give God thanks that last week was a powerful week. This week, in, it, it is promised to be a powerful message from the Lord. And so we need to pray and ensure that we cover each other and cover our ears, cover the atmosphere. Glory be to God. And today, the message, my brothers and sisters, will be one that, my brothers and sisters, will cause us to think more and more about God. We should be drawn, join us closer to God. One more time, my brothers and sisters, remember to like, share, subscribe, click the notification bell right over here so that when we put on new content, you will receive that notification. Also, to subscribe to the channel one more time we simply exist to bring the gospel to a dying world and my brothers and sisters guess what we need hallelujah more subscribers when you give us more subscription it gives us more ratings and my brothers and sisters we are not really looking at ratings but we are looking at impacting the world for God and so guess what that is how we impact the world so we thank God for this opportunity so I'm asking you one more time to pray for us to go ahead like share and subscribe and also to share the link with someone let someone know that there's a word on the world channel 345 for them I am Reverend Lennox Aiden most of you know me already some of you are just coming on thank you for coming on if you're a new vi new viewer we welcome you to the world channel 345 family indeed my brothers and sisters this is a glorious opportunity to spread the gospel to a dying world my brothers and sisters as we go into the word we're going to pray let us pray father we thank you one more time for your goodness your mercy your grace which has been extended towards us fresh another time lord we do not take it lightly because god we are above the earth and so god we are going to use this opportunity to bring others here we're going to use this opportunity to witness to others we're going to use this opportunity god Almighty, to share the gospel to someone else or with someone else and so father we thank you we pray for the anointing upon your word right now we pray for the anointing upon your man servant we pray for your anointing upon this channel that god almighty you alone will get the glory and the honor and the praise that is due unto your name in Jesus' name amen amen and amen and so we're going to go right into the word today my brothers and sisters and so we'll be looking at a passage of scripture from the book of judges judges chapter 15 glory be to god and so let us read uh from the verse i'm going to read from the verse 13 onward and it says from judges chapter 15 and they spake unto him saying no but we will bind thee fast and deliver thee unto their hand but surely we will not kill thee. And they bound him with two new cords and brought him up from the rock. And when he came unto Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily up on him. And the cords that were up on his arms became as flax that were up on his arms. And it says that were burnt with fire and the bands loose from his hands. And he found a new jawbone, someone said new jawbone, of an ass and put it forth in his hand and took it and slew a thousand men therewith. And Samson said, with the jawbone of an ass, heap up on heap with the jaw of an ass, had he slain a thousand men. And it came to pass that when he had made an end of speaking, that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand and called the place Rath, Ramath Lehi. Ramath Lehi. Glory be to God. And so, my brothers and sisters, today I want to talk to you about something that many of us did not see in this passage. And I hope and trust that as I teach along and preach along with this passage, that you will gain something from it. My brothers and sisters, if I'm to give this message a topic, it will be simply this, that God, hallelujah, uses today. God uses the now. Somebody say God uses the now. Declare God uses the now. I want us to understand, my friends, that as we look at the now, what happens is that God is a God of the present and God is in our present. God also uses things from our past to remind us of the power and the glory and the majesty that is in his name. We can look at, my brothers and sisters, many different things in order for us to come into grips with who God is. Remember, the Bible says that in the beginning, God was the word and God created the heavens and the earth 
through the word. Please remember also that, my brothers and sisters, that the, our, our history tells us that Jesus Christ, my brothers and sisters, was, was, was the one who died for our sins. Today we are looking at something as it relates to a man called Samson. And the reason why I, I, I use that foundation of God being the word is that we need to understand that everything began with God. Everything will finish with God because the Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. And the Bible comes back in Revelation and it says, my brothers and sisters, at the end of all of this, he will be called the Alpha and the Omega. So he's the beginning and the end. But we want to talk about today now that God is in the now. We need to understand, my friends, that your situation is in the now. Your situation does not rely on your past. Your situation does not rely on your future. Your situation relies on what you do with your now. Somebody declare. I want to understand what is my now. If you are listening to me, go ahead and send this link out to somebody. Tell them that somebody is on the channel, the World Channel 5, talking about my now. Hallelujah. God is in my now. Oh, glory be to God. The Bible says, my friends, that Samson, hallelujah, one of God's chosen to deliver Israel, to deliver his people. Samson, my brothers and sisters, put himself in a precarious position. The Bible declares, my friends, that Samson had some great parents as we see in Judges chapter 13 it, it says that Samson was declared to be one who was a Nazarite one who my brother said did not hallelujah was not allowed rather to do certain things he was not allowed to to eat certain things he was not allowed to touch certain things so God was dealing with his no God was not dealing with his parents to say that you are from a certain generation God was dealing with Samson no he was dealing with Samson's no anointing I'm talking to somebody out there because you're now anointing makes the difference you see my friends what happens to us many times is that we are depending on what God used yesterday can I talk to somebody hallelujah in the world they would say what hallelujah works do not change it but can I talk to somebody that God is a God of the now anointing the Bible says my friends when Jesus was on the cross oh glory be to God it says father into thy hands I commit my spirit. He did not say, Father, into thy hands I commit whatever I did before. He says, no, hallelujah, I commend my spirit. We need to understand that our God is a God of the now. Where are you going, preacher? Where are you going with this? Hallelujah, I want you to come along with me. You see, my friends, according to uh, Judges chapter 15 and the verse 13, Samson, my brothers and sisters, was in a position, my brothers and sisters, whereby Samson, glory be to God, was being was captured. And so his, 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 his captors said to him, Samson, we are going to do you this thing. So tell us, remember now that Samson, my brothers and sisters, hallelujah, was now beginning to play around with his anointing. He was about to play around with what God had given to him. His now anointing, where the Bible says, says that the Bible, God tell, told him and told his parents that he must not have any strong drink, that he must not touch any dead bodies, that he must not uh, marry outside of his race. Samson dead, messed up all of that. He went into his now anointing, the thing that God told him not to mess around with. He did some things with his now anointing that disturbed God. It caused his relationship with God to be separated. Can I tell somebody out there who is listening? Listening to me, you are messing with your no anointing. You are messing with the fact that God has anointed you for such a time as this. Oh, as I heard that in my spirit, I can remember glory be to God Almighty. Oh, hallelujah. The young lady, glory be to God Almighty. Esther, oh hallelujah, thank you Holy Spirit, who had a no anointed, the Bible says that her people were being threatened to die, oh by a man called Amon, oh glory some Amon in our lives, want to mess up our no anointing, the Bible says my friends, that hallelujah, that Esther, oh glory be to God Almighty, knew and recognized that our people were in danger, some of us need to understand that when you mess with your anointing, you are in danger, the enemy declared that he wants to see 
was like wheat. He wants to separate us from God. So he will do anything to get you out of your no anointing. Look at it, my friends. Oh, glory be to God. Sometimes when you look at it in this real life, you know, when God has used you to do something, oh, glory be to God, and you look back on yourself, you call yourself powerful. You tell yourself, I have all of this, but it is not you. It is God that gave you the anointing for such a time as this. Can I talk to somebody? Do not hype yourself up and do not put yourself high above anyone else because the anointing comes from God. Somebody declare my no anointing. It comes from God. You see, sometimes what happens is we want to use what happened yesterday to declare I am anointed today, but can I tell you that every time that God uses us, the enemy goes back to counsel and he looks at what we have done. He looks to find the loopholes. Oh, glory be to God in our anointing. One loophole in our anointing is self. Or might I tell you, my friends, that self is failure. And once self comes in, your anointing is warped. Can I remind you one now, now about Esther and Amon and Mordecai? Mordecai was Esther's uncle. Mordecai was a man who sat at the gates. Oh, glory be to God. And heard the plot, hallelujah, that Amon was carrying out to take out the children of Israel, to take out God's people. And so Amon, hallelujah, Mordecai went to Esther and told her the plan. Esther, my friends, had a no anointing because the Bible says that the girl Esther went in. We have to understand that according to the king and according to the principles of that kingdom, once the king does not put out the scepter, you have no right to go into the king's presence. But the Bible declares, oh, glory be to God, that Esther had a no anointing. She went into the king without the king color. In the Bible says, my friends, that when the king saw the beauty of the young lady, when the king saw the appearance and saw Esther, he asked Esther, what is going on with you? He stretched out his scepter. Sometimes, my friends, you're now anointing. Glory be to God cause you to have favor. Let me not say sometimes, but the anointing, you're now anointing cause you to have favor among kings, among princes, among princesses, among, hallelujah, among hierarchy people. The anointing, hallelujah, makes the difference. And so, my friends, because Esther had a no anointing. Oh, hallelujah. God is in your no anointing. You see, if God was not with Esther, then Esther could not go into the king. Oh, hallelujah. Can I tell you about somebody else who had a no anointing? His name was David. The Bible says, my friends, that glory be to God that Saul was king of Israel. And my brother and sister, Saul went and mess around or with some other types of anointing. Can I tell somebody out there that you need to wait on God for the no anointing. Wait on God for his anointing because some of us will go out there and mess around with some anointing that God did not create. Remember the Bible tells us that the only thing that the devil cannot do is to blow breath. The enemy can create anointing. Hallelujah. That you and I might see it's called sorcery. It's called witchcraft and some of us need to understand that there are some anointings, hallelujah, that are operating around you. That is not really from God, but it is witchcraft. Oh, glory be to God, especially when individuals will want to say only them, God will use only them. And only when they are around that God move. That is, my friends, messing around with the anointing. The Bible says that David, my brothers and sisters, was anointed and Saul had lost the anointing because Saul went and messed around with some stuff. The Bible says, my friends, oh, glory be to God, that David, hallelujah, went into the presence of Saul. The Bible says that Saul was troubled with a spirit. The Bible says that God allowed him to be troubled with a spirit. Sometimes, my friends, when you mess around with the anointing, God will allow some things to happen in your life that you cannot understand. Some things will happen in your presence that you cannot explain. But when you mess with the no anointing, you are endangered. The Bible says that the Bible says that the spirit began to trouble Saul. My God, but here comes David, this little shepherd boy. Oh, glory, the Bible says that the David took the harp and David played skillfully. My God, and it sued, hallelujah, the spirit which was in Saul, that spirit oh, of oppression and depression that is over you right now. You're now anointing. God can send a no anointing to soothe you. God can send a no anointing to deliver you. God can send a no, no anointing to set you free. There's somebody that wants to declare God is in my no anointing. And so, my friends, the Bible says that as David began to play the harp, it says that 
the hallelujah Saul became so so became so calm hallelujah sometimes our situation needs a no anointed to calm it down somebody declare Lord I need a no anointing but my brothers and sisters the Bible says that once David stopped playing the harp that Saul became angry as a matter of fact the Bible says that Saul took a javelin and threw it after David hallelujah because the spirit of God was not with him somebody needs to understand that I'm speaking to the spirit of God that is within you. Oh, hallelujah. Some of us have left our anointing, hallelujah, at the airport. Some of us have left our anointing on the, the plane step. Some of us have left our anointing at the deep, uh, at the hallelujah, at the boarding stage. Hallelujah, when we are coming on the plane, hallelujah. But I'm speaking to you right now. You need a no anointing. You cannot rely on what was yesterday. You have to rely on what happens today. Can I get back to Samson to bring this thing down to a close to help somebody to understand that they know anointing is real. The Bible says that as Samson, glory be to God Almighty, was in captivity, somebody out there, I am talking to you today that you need a know anointing. You need to get this word in your spirit because you need an anointing to break the yoke that is over. You need an anointing, a know anointing to break the spell. You need an anointing to break the curse which they have set over you. The Bible says, my friends, in the verse 14, and then they came unto Lehi. Somebody said, Lehi. Oh, glory be to God. And the Philistines shouted against him. And the Spirit of the Lord, my God, came upon him mightily. Let's pause there. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily. That is when a no anointing reaches you. You see, my friends, when we depend on the anointing from yesterday, that is hallelujah, something that God did for yesterday. But today, glory be to God, the devils that we face today, hallelujah, are operating in today. While we're operating in yesterday, it's like we're operating in analog while they're op operating digital. And so, my friends, we need today and no one did somebody cry out lord i need to and no anointing i need a today anointing to deal with my situation today hallelujah god is a god of no the Bible says that the Lord came upon him mightily. I'm talking to somebody right now as I speak to you that the presence of God is going to come upon you mightily once this word reaches your spirit. It has to reach your inner spirit to get your understanding, to understand who you are in God, to understand where you're operating from. You're not operating from a point of defeat, but you're operating from a point of victory. The Bible says, Oh, glory be to God, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily. And he and the cords which were upon his arms, hallelujah, became like flax. When the no anointing comes upon your mind, hallelujah, everything that seems to bind you will only serve to remind you that they will drop powerless behind you when you praise God. A praise sometimes, hallelujah, brings up a no anointing. Somebody magnify the Lord when you can praise God in a circumstance. Just like the three Hebrew boys, the Bible says, says that my brothers and sisters as they were in the fiery furnace they needed a no anointing to take them out when Daniel was in the lion's den he needed a no anointing he did not need an anointing that hallelujah that he was that he when he was in Babylon he needed an anointing while he was in the lion's den the boy the three Hebrew boys needed an anointing when they were in the fiery furnace and no anointing can come through your praise you see sometimes my friends you have to put aside yourself you have to lose yourself and find it in God for a no anointing to come upon you. The Bible says, my friends, that hallelujah, as the no anointing came upon Samson, that all the cords became like flax. Sometimes, my friends, when you praise God, when you shout out to God, when you lose yourself in God, when you just, hallelujah, just, 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 just begin to forget about yourself and remember that you're a child of God, things can turn around, things change. Hallelujah, your atmosphere change. Glory be to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Your atmosphere change when a no anointing comes upon you. Oh, glory be to God. The Bible says, my friends, that and he found a new new jawbone. Let us pause there. The Bible also tells us that Samson was not supposed to touch any dead thing. This man now found a jawbone of an ass. Oh, glory be to God. And he says he put forth in his hand and he took it. And when that anointing came up on him, along with the jawbone of an ass, the Bible says that he came and he slew over a thousand men therewith. Oh, hallelujah. When the anointing comes upon you, you are able to slay your enemies. You are about to destroy the 
the spiritual warfare that's around you. You're all, oh, you're anointed now to do a no thing. Samson's anointing was to destroy his enemies now. It was not for yesterday when they tied him up. It was not for all the, the future when they plucked out his eye. It was right now. Somebody, you need a no anointing to deal with you now. Well, just begin to praise God. Not only that, my friends, but it says that and Samson with the job of an ass, he upon the heaps with the jawbone of an ass he had slain a thousand that's not the meat of the matter that's not what i want to talk to you about today but what i recognize my friends is that when Samson was done with what he had done, when the anointing was finished with him, some of us need to understand, even as we are in church, even as we are going about our business, that once the anointing of God leaves you, then you are, hallelujah, out of the anointing. Some people want to continue in some things. You see, the Bible says that the Spirit of God does not always strive with men. That is the reason why I can declare today that you need a no anointing for your situation. Somebody shout out, I need a no anointing. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow is on the way. And so I need a no anointing. The things that I did yesterday cannot work for today. You know what? Let, let me go back to the scriptures. Just to prove to you that you need a no anointing to get yourself out of what you're in. It says, and it came to pass, that's the verse 17 of Genesis chapter 15, that when he had made an end of his speaking, he cast away the jawbone out of his hand and called it Rav, Ramath Lehi. So what is happening, my friends, after the anointing left him, after he was done with the jawbone, after he was finished with using what he found on the ground, the Bible says he threw it away. You see, most of us, my friends, hallelujah, I heard a man talk about this. He said that some of us want to put a pattern on it. Oh, glory be to God, we want to use it all the time. Oh, glory be to God, but what am I saying to us today is that once that is done, it is finished. God knows exactly what he's doing. You see, God does not want us to think that we have the power. Oh, glory be to God, but his power comes from him. So when the anointing is finished, the no anointing is finished, it is finished. God is saying to us, once we have used the jawbone and we have dealt with our enemies, he said to throw it away. You see, but we want to put a pattern on it. What a pattern mean is that we want to say, you know, we want to call it now. Hallelujah. The Whatever, whatever our name is, we want to put a pattern on it. So this is my anointing, and this is what I did. But God is saying to us, my friends, we are powerless without his anointing. And therefore we need and no anointing to deal with everything in our lives. So yesterday I dealt with something with the anointing that God gave me for yesterday. And today Lord, I need an anointing for what is happening today. My God, what a word. On the word channel 345 each and every one of us needs a no anointing to deal with what is happening in our lives. Yesterday my friends, that was the anointing for yesterday. Tomorrow is going to need another anointing. That's the reason why the Bible says that in our lives account, my friends he deposits each and every day a fresh touch of grace and mercy and I declare today that each and every morning he, he gives us a fresh touch of the anointing a new anointing for each day hallelujah so today we declare Lord I need the anointing for today as I close I want us to take this example from Samson. The Bible says that Samson used the jawboard. Once he was done, he threw it away. We are not going to put it, hallelujah, that today that we used the jawbone yesterday and today we're going to use it and next week we're going to use it because God knows what anointing we need to break that yoke and to set us free. Therefore, cry out with me today, Lord, I need today's anointing. I need a new anointing for today. Throw away the jawbone of the ass man because God already used that to kill a thousand and men. God already used that to slay some of our situations. But God is going to use something new tomorrow and therefore we have to be in the position to want to be used by God in a new way. Similar, my friends, with what he did with Mordecai and Amon. That was when God used that. Oh, glory be to God. Today, God is going to use something else through us. And that is why God is so special. That is why God is so awesome. Because God is not a God, hallelujah, that we can tame. He's not a God that we can understand. 
understand. He's far beyond our understanding. The Bible says that his ways are far as the east is from the west from our ways. And therefore, that is why we can declare today that, Lord, I need a no anointing to break my yoke and to set me free. Somebody declare, Lord, I need a no anointing. Whatever you need today, God will give you that anointing to break the yoke. God will give you the anointing that makes the difference. My God, yesterday's anointing is gone and we need a fresh anointing for today. My God, I hope somebody got this word today that you need a fresh anointing, a new anointing to declare hallelujah, to destroy the yoke that is on your life. My God Almighty, some of us, hallelujah, think about turtle doves and ram. You don't see what God did. God changed that around. And so he used Jesus Christ. That is how God operates. Somebody declare, I need a no anointing, hallelujah, to break the yoke and to set me free. Glory be to God with a word on the word channel 3 for 5. I pray that someone gets it today, that you have used the job of an ass yesterday. Oh, hallelujah. You have used, hallelujah, playing your harp yesterday. But what God is using today, you have to get into that. You have to get back to God. You have to depend. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You have to depend on God for the anointing that breaks the yoke that is upon you today. Hallelujah. That's why God is so awesome, because we have to depend solely upon him to break our yoke and set us free. Hallelujah. What a word. I need a no anointing from your Lord. And therefore, God, I'm going to pray. Father, I thank you right now. Oh, God, for this word. God, somebody out there, God needs a no anointing. But Lord, in order for us to get the no anointing, we have to tap into you. We have to tap into the source. And therefore, God Almighty, some of us might not have understood that, Lord, God Almighty, what you have given us yesterday was for yesterday. And therefore, God, we have to be prepared as vessels of honor. Oh, hallelujah, we have to keep ourselves clean. We have to keep ourselves pure. That you may pour into us, God, that the anointing that you give to us for today is, oh, God, used for today. And Lord, tomorrow we come. And we say, Lord, fill us up again. Oh, God, I'm ready to fill my cup, Lord, high and lift it up. Come and quench this thirst in my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Here's my cup, Lord. Turn up to you. Fill it up and make me whole. Lord, fill us each day and make us whole each day. That, Lord, we will have a new, a fresh anointing, a no anointing. Oh, hallelujah for every situation that we are in. Lord, we thank you this moment. And we thank you, God Almighty, for the cleansing. We thank you for the out pouring. Lord Almighty, you declare in your word and you promise in your word that upon all oh, on the last days, you shall pour out upon our flesh. Oh God, you shall pour upon us, oh God Almighty, a fresh and a, a fresh anointing, a new spirit, a right spirit within us, that God will may be able to defeat the enemies of our soul in Jesus' name. So we thank you right now and we praise you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So God promises us, my brothers and sisters, a fresh anointing each day a fresh anointing each moment of our lives. So may we stand fast, my brothers and sisters, and declare to God, Lord, I need a no anointing. Hallelujah. For my no situation. Glory be to God. What a word on the word channel 3 for 5. And so we want to say thank you for choosing the word channel 3 for 5 this week. We pray and trust that it was one that will have blessed your heart. You will go and send the link out to someone. Tell someone they need a no anointing. For there is no situation, and the only way that they can receive that no anointing is through God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Today, we need a no anointing. Will you choose, hallelujah, to make yourselves available that God may use you in the now. Hallelujah. Your anointing may be in the now, and God will be glorified in the now. God bless you, my friends, loved ones, everyone, and thank you one more time. Remember to come back to us next week, same time, same place, right here on the Word Channel 345. God bless you. Take care of yourselves.